All right, are you ready? I'm gonna do lucha first. Lucha, lucha, that gotta be game. You can't see me. That's Elliot, and you're listening to the Backlash Podcast. Backlash Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Backlash Podcast. We are on episode 15. 15. Yeah. I was hoping to make it to 10, I'll be honest. <laughs> but we're still going, we've still got some fresh ideas, we got some great content for this podcast, so um, let's dive in with our Around the Web segment. Um, before we dive in, if you're watching the YouTube, we have a special guest off to the side of the camera, I won't mention his name, but he might come on screen and dance from time to time. We'll just go with the flow, okay guys? All right, it's around the web, Scott. Um, lots uh, happened. It was a pretty lively week in yeah. Discord and on TCO. There was lots of new threads, so that's awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, on the let's get into some virtual nine stuff right off the hop. Um, so Creed uh, showed up on the Team Canada online Discord channel to address something. Mm -hmm. You know, figure while he's there, let's ask him some questions. Uh, so I asked him about, you know, if he had any teases for us, and he said about the upcoming new set. Um, it'll be weird because we started on it uh, a couple years ago uh, while they were working on the Virtual Revolution 5 and then Virtual 8. Uh, so we have been, so, oh, so we have catching up to do, and we're a bit behind on what's on TV now, the WWE product. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, with the new set, since it's all NXT stuff, there'll be a couple superstars that have already left the company. So, curious who they'll be. Uh, but they look good and should be fun enough to warrant keeping them. And then, uh, when speaking about the revisions, the annual revisions for this year, uh, it should be out pre-Gen Con. Uh, next week is busy and awesome for me, but after that I should be able to crunch down on revisions and get them out. Probably by June 1st at the latest. Um, so what is, there, is there a thread where we can offer revisions, or is there a... I guess that's kind of an ongoing thing, right? Like when we did Rocking Chair a few weeks ago, they just like, all right, it's not, as of today, it's completely revised. Yeah, well, New Day got their backstage area card revised that's within right. like a few weeks. Yeah. I think when it comes to that, where, because different playgroups play differently, Yeah. Um, so the, the, the team's been really good about... Uh, addressing problems immediately, yeah, and then and issuing like case the revisions. Case basis, yeah. uh, so what do you think, Scott, about um, the Virtual 9, I guess, with it's all NXT, uh, and some superstars have already left the company? Yeah, that'd probably be someone like Austin Aries or Neville, who were top of the cruiserweight mm -hmm. division for the time that they were there. Um, I, NXT guys, like Shinsuke, well, let's, maybe Bobby Roode, although he's still pretty new, but... Um, I think, well, released from the company, not released from NXT. Yeah. So, Emma comes to mind. She was a big player in yeah. NXT. Has a few specifics in the game already, yeah. I think. Or and then someone else mentioned, mentioned, mentioned that, in the game. <laughs> yeah. Someone else on TCO had mentioned her by name, and I thought that was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even think of Austin Aries yeah. until you just mentioned him. And Neville, like Neville was like... The you know, Cruiserweight champ. Yeah. Retained but, at WrestleMania. <laughs> Um, uh, however, he made a post on TCO, which everyone else probably saw. Um, someone had asked him about non-specifics coming in the set, mm -hmm. and he was uh, not about you know deck building cards, uh, like non-specific deck building yeah. cards in the new set. He was not really, to be honest, making non-superstar specific cards is really difficult with so many superstars to exploit them. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, oh, we forgot Jamie Noble plus X breaks the game. Or New Day wins in two turns with this. Oh, man, back to the drawing board. Um, however, they uh, there's an idea to make Cruiserweight stand out, but that's based around one, maybe two cards. More on that down the road. So I can see that being, like, the the revolution of the revolutionizing yeah. the business. What is that card called? Yeah. The new female revolutionizing one. Revolutionizing the division. division? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can see that. I mean, they already have cruiserweight style action, yeah. but so many non. And I can see that's how they could bring out non-specific cards, right? Where they kind of like, okay, if only these certain amount of superstars can pack it, it's a Daddy. little easier to Daddy. control and Daddy. test with just a handful of Daddy. superstars rather than all Daddy. 300. Don't play soccer. Not right now. After we're done. 
But you can play soccer and talk to Eric if you want. I don't think so. That's very complicated. I can see them doing like um, like they do extremist and legend. They could do like cruiserweight superstar ability yeah. for the two hundred five live guys. Mm -hmm. Live live guys. Yeah. Um, he brings up that we're not going to see Enzo or Enzo and Cass yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, Back on the non-specifics, like it's cool that Lackey had like twenty two people in their tournament, which I'm sure we'll talk I'm bringing about that up, um, but like. That's opportunity for people are getting together and playing cards, right? So I don't mm -hmm. know how they play test cards, but if it's on Lackey, and there's, there's so many people growing, and the Lackey community mm -hmm. seems to be growing on a monthly basis because it's the easiest way to bring everyone together mm -hmm. that plays the game, right? Rather well, than driving 12 hours like we're going to crazily do in a few months. <laughs> I, have, I have more on Lackey in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, he has confirmed... Two, he has confirmed two names for the set, which is Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm -hmm. Which I think they're obvious ones. Yeah, yeah, they're two huge stars in WWE right now. So, um, so with yeah, so with non-specifics, I mean, I'd like to see some more, just because it more variety of deck building. So yeah. I, around at least our parts, um, cruiserweight style action decks kind of seem to be the same. Like with the high flying yeah. style, so like that maneuver base is yeah. kind of predictable. Um, and there's another one like you know Mean Gene. Like if your face, half the decks are going to be running that, I think. Yeah. And then just getting everything reversed, anyways. Yeah. Um, but no, that's really big news. I mean, that should be coming out August, September. Mm -hmm. It was late last year. Yeah. Because it was in two parts. But the revisions will be interesting because Funk Con is. Mid June, yeah. so we're gonna have to deal with all. But the revision, things. as you said, they've been coming out as they go, mm -hmm. right? So that shouldn't impact playing anything really. Like it's just the new card images for the revisions. So. Well, it's well, it could also change a lot of cards. I mean, you look last year, Rick Rude, McFoley, a lot of those guys yeah, got potentially, yeah. changed big time. I asked Creed about that on the Discord, and it's not gonna be an, a big amount yeah. like last year. Moving on to the Lackey, um, current tournament going is bad superstars. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at the list though, and I'm like, man, I've wanted to build a lot of these guys, yeah, yeah. and then I get the Usos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a um, it's a record tying amount of participants with 22 players. Mm -hmm. I did the research, and I'm sure I could nice. be wrong yeah. somehow. Uh, but that'll be fun. I'm waiting on my first round game. A lot of first round games have been going on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be neat because what I like about Lackey is you could save your game mid progress. Yeah. Let's see, let's come back. Something came up. That's pretty neat. Uh, that was lit. <laughs> but with that as well, what was that? Um, yeah, raw TV is a project based out of Singapore. They're working on uh, a mobile application yeah. for the game. Hi. It'll be free. Hi. Check out that website, they have some concepts Hi. on there. Uh, I'll have more news for the next episode about that, but check that out. There's a lot of images on there and the concepts. There was a team that brought us Al Snow and Xavier Woods yeah. playing a lot of deal. That's all I have for really around the web. I mean, there's a lot of news towards the end of the week. Yeah. But it'll be fun. More superstars. Yeah. And we had a new player post on TCO, Jay Riley, and Jay mm -hmm. Riley, something like that. Um, and you made a comment welcoming him and you know, giving some tips. And then your last sentence was like, we've been playing for 15 years and we're still learning things. And I think that's kind of like the the theme of the rest of the episode as we talk about mm -hmm. some of our matches and <laughs> some card the templates. We'll touch on that again. And, but. but yeah, and he was, I mean, let's visit, because he's, he's a new player. He's not a returning player. Yeah. Um, so with that, you know... How do you bring a new player? Let's let's visit that a little bit. Like, how do you bring a new player into the game, mm -hmm. especially a game that's so in in the TCO community? It's so virtual dominant. Um, I don't suggest virtual to start with, or the virtual superstars at the very least. On to the next segment, our tournament report. <laughs> We have to do some cuts because Elliot walks in and starts singing the Pokemon theme song and stuff like that. Which is, you know, stay tuned for our Pokemon podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tournament report, we had four players show up. 
And me. Can I hold your blaster? You can hold my blaster. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll let you talk about that. Um, you played Alberto Del Rio. There was a Heidenreich. There was Roman Reigns and Vicky Guerrero. Yeah. Um, neat. We haven't seen Vicky Guerrero, haven't seen Del Rio, and haven't seen Roman Reigns. So it was three new superstars. And I, did Pat play Heidenreich last time? He's played once before. But I think he like interpreted the kidney punch wrong or something along those lines. So he kind of revised his deck and this was a more <laughs> um, updated version of Heidenreich. So yeah, but three new superstars were pretty good. I played Devil's Favorite Demon for a couple games. Um, I want to talk about my Vicky Guerrero game first before mm -hmm. we get into the Heidenreich discussion. Um, sh the deck, Vicky Guerrero, um, whenever your opponent plays an action, you can respond to it by immediately playing an action, and then your opponent has the chance to reverse that, but once all of that resolves, your action is successful. So instead of reversing it, he gets to play a card, kind of like an oversell, but without <laughs> ending the turn. Um, poor Vicky Guerrero player, though, not a lot of people are playing actions. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's really a meta heavy superstar, I think, where yeah. like if I was playing Trish Stratus, I think that would have been something completely different as well. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. It's like Jericho and Edge's remakes, right, that are mm -hmm. based on your opponent playing actions. It's, it's tough because it's a pretty aggro um, meta right now, especially with old school wrestling match being a card mm -hmm. <laughs> where you have to overturn six if you don't play a maneuver, so a lot of decks are focusing on Maneuvers. But a standout on that was the Cena Enforcer. I had no backlash deck by like, I say the sixth turn yeah. because um, well, those like the Diva maneuvers. Yeah. Hard to reverse to begin with. So now he's successfully playing it. Lose your three. Yeah. When I'm playing eleven pre-match cards. Yeah, it's all backlash. You know, and that's all that's match. really that really caught me off guard. So it had me look at you know off topic a little bit. It had me look into John Cena stuff. Yeah. And he got some pretty decent pre-match cards yeah. over the sets. Yeah, because they blanked his yo kill the beat, mm -hmm. so they threw it back and gave him some other tools to work with. But there's one that's never give up where you play uh, a maneuver without re without a, re a reverse in the yeah. text or a superstar specific action. And if it's reversed, you put it under. And if it's your first card played on your turn, you can immediately play yeah. it. Um, but yeah, that's that was a neat little card. And like even with you being Del Rio and getting to choose which Backlash or mid match cards. You it was, it was, it was just as it was potent annoying. because by turn five or six they're all gone anyway. So. <laughs> uh, and I also played against Roman Reigns. Did you get a chance to play Roman? Yes, I played Roman. Um, what do you think of him? Um, I didn't see much of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I my deck played old school, Donnie Brook and Roman just played right into it, like, forgot it was a thing, mm -hmm. and kind of built up his hand to be all nice and good, and had three Scotty Worms in it, and then I was like, all right, let's Donnybrook, and he's like, Marr! <laughs> so he really didn't have anything in his hand, and I just went, multi-moves, boom. Uh, him and I had a good game, mistakes were made, uh, admittedly, he had said that it's a work in progress, <laughs> yeah. he missed out some stuff. It's the first, temp first run yeah. of the deck. But it's annoying. He's got an effect where when you reverse one of his volley cards or bash cards, like he can pack bash and volley. Yeah, that's pretty that, nasty. That's, that's nasty. But you have to discard a card. Yeah, yeah it's a discard. A it's, it's annoying, but I mean, I had him on the. I actually had the game recorded. It's on the YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up making a big mistake on a reversal, but he had played that wrong maneuver in the first place, so uh -huh. it was like. It ended up being a wash for the both of us. Yeah. He's our new champion, locally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Heidenreich, you want to talk about your experience with him? Yeah, basically what we wanted to talk about was the interaction of Kidney Punch and old school Steel Cage Match, mm -hmm. and basically Steel Cage Match in general. Um, so we were trying to figure out the interaction of how Heidenreich interacts with old school mm -hmm. Steel Cage Match because movements are reduced by one, but Heidenreich says you can remove the kidney punches from the game, and then his pre-match card says that your opponent can't affect you from picking out kidney punch. So we, I guess we played it wrong. <laughs> At the end of the day, we came back on Discord and had a big chat about it. Um, basically, he can just use the effect to pick up his kidney punches, old school cage match. 
doesn't affect the kidney punch mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But what it, they said is, if he's playing the old school cage match, he's affected by it. Yeah, because it's not your opponent. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, what Heidrich was doing was removing a kidney punch from the game to pick up a kidney punch removed from the game. Yeah. And then picking up his kidney punch he had just removed from the game with another effect. Yeah. It's nasty, and he's tossing them at zero for tens. Yeah. Um, I... Th there was one thing, I think, I reached, reached Caesar grasp his kidney punch, which I'm not sure if you can do. I went to read, um, because it makes kidney punch specifics, his backlash. Yeah, occurred. so you wouldn't have been able to. Um, but I think his reach... Say he's printed superstar specific. I can't recall. I don't know. So I might have I might have screwed up on that at the beginning. Um, but again, we're kind of learning. Right? Like, like we're 15 years in the game. We're still learning how cards interact. And I honestly, what some cards do. We we still ask. It's like, do I take this damage from the reversal first, or do I do the outside? Yeah, yeah. First? Do I shuffle for Calgary, or do I overturn for Calgary? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a complicated game. There's some timing breakdowns. Mm -hmm. um. But what's good, too, with tournaments is you kind of get a different mindset when you're in an event, depending on your prizes. Yeah. So, because our event, we weren't playing for store credit. Uh, we were playing for... We had alternate arts and other, other kind of printed-off card prizes where it was more of a laid-back atmosphere because yeah. it wasn't... Well, it wasn't signature cards. Yeah, or, yeah. Or cash. I mean, when you're playing for money, you know, that, that extra edge is there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was good when you're learning those things where it was more of a, a casual attitude about that kind of stuff. Where I think if you were playing for, like, you know, $30 store credit, there would be more of a, a serious tone to yeah, it. Yeah. But, I mean, like, our playgroup has always been more casual mm -hmm. anyways. Um, we were talking about old school steel cage match like that's the first time it's been played really in our area um making your escape no one really runs it in our area because no one really runs first of all or uh, uh, hell in a cell hell in a cell the volley has slowly been mm. increasing in popularity but there was never really volley locks in our area and then the um the card that it was played the escape Oh, there's no escape. There's no you. escape, yeah. Right? No one really played that up until a few weeks ago either, right? So we're a really laid back mm -hmm. area, and if it's like, oh, that card's kind of really good, we'll kind of steer away from it or play it once, see how good it is, and be like, okay, let, yeah, it's good, let's leave it. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we want to have fun. Yeah. Um, we're not super competitive, and the odd time we'll be like, all right, let's be competitive for this tournament, mm -hmm. and everyone bring out your cheesy stuff, and we'll do that mm -hmm. once a year or so, right? But um, well, I want to I want to touch on my Alberto Del Rio deck a little bit. We discussed our I discussed this deck on the last episode, um, where I find with him he's not worth packing ring psychology arm mm -hmm. at all uh, because he has his scarf that gives all your arms and wrists minus four fortitude plus four damage. Yeah. And it's not active if you have Rig Psychology Arm in play or if it's not blank. The Opulence, his min match action that is so good, mm -hmm. um, blanks it. So I'm, I, first round I, I played the Arm, and then going forward after that I didn't, and the deck performed so much better. Yeah. Because I'm always getting that minus four plus four. I'm yeah. running the hardcore title, so now they're minus two plus one. Mm -hmm. So here I have minus six plus, plus five, five yeah. damage <coughs> arm maneuvers, like like the wraparound yeah. wrist lock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like over over eight, which is that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, opulence is good. Um, whenever you play a maneuver, you choose a move in his ring. And that card gains, it gets the text instead. Yeah. Which is, but it looks like it's a forced effect, so I'm not too keen on that because mm -hmm. if I'm playing. Um, well, you played Stardust, right? And you had to steal the text on Scoop Slam, cannot be played by females. But that, but that affects <laughs> maneuvers with reversal restrictions, so yeah. if I'm playing Shoot That's Forearm. True. You can pick a. If, if I have to pick a maneuver in his rank, then that Shoot Forearm doesn't lose that protection from a revolution of the mind. Oh, okay. So I gotta be more choosy, and I've done some editing with it, like just modifying the deck. 
I was running the Allegiance where you randomly discard a card and randomly remove two to search right. for a maneuver. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be more beneficial to run the Allegiance where you discard two and you're considered to have lower fortitude because Opulence activates when you're lower, yeah. which makes it so your opponent cannot play I think non-hybrid reversals to it. Mm -hmm. so That's another that, thing that I learned was about that Allegiance, always on the winning side, my side, uh, that the cost is just a random removal from inside, mm -hmm. not random removal and random discard, and then walking into a don't try which yeah. you have to discard. Like, that's the biggest reason I've never literally activated mm -hmm. the card in my life, because I was like, oh, you have to discard four if they don't try it. I think that's a little pricey. Um, but now that I know it's just a random from ringside, and then two of choice if they don't try it, yeah. it's a little less uh, painful to walk into. And then my big, my big standout for figuring out that ruling is you look at, like, enter the stratosphere. Yeah. It's that and then you discard a card and then your opponent overturns too. Mm -hmm. So anytime you see that in an activated card effect, that's yeah. kind of like your break between yeah. the response. What other random discard cards did you run with him? I know I saw Taunt the Fans. Taunt the Fans was, was cool. so good. Um, I had a Sucker Punch, the yeah. Heat one in there before, but I took it out. Uh, it's, just, it's easy to reverse. Mm -hmm. I can't think of any. Like the Allegiance would be a good one where you could discard two by choice. That'd be neat. But it, again, if you find that you the lower fortitude for opulence is better than. What was great is my opponents kept activating thrust knee lifts. Yeah. Like that was the biggest thing of the game where it's like put thrust knee lift under, the, and it's like okay, I'll pick. Like that was yeah the main true. reason yeah. right there. Um, I didn't you uh, remove from the volley trade at all? I was gonna say, do you get to pick for volley trade? I don't believe so. I think it's card effects, oh, okay. or maybe no, because it's not affects your opponent controls. Um, but it, it didn't factor yeah, in at yeah. all. And volley this, yeah. Like you, you choose, like you choose what you remove from volley this, yeah, yeah. which is great. Okay. I wish I had more out of the game recursion because then you can kind of manipulate that stuff a little. That's better. something that I really struggle with. Is that like, would I rather choose? Or, or be random. Now, I know, like everyone with a brain says, choose. But you get that like analysis process where, like, okay, I have these choices. Which one do I pick? Which one am I gonna need later for the game? And I don't want to make the wrong choice because, yeah, I don't need this card now, but I may need it later. Whereas if it's random, it's kind of up to chance. And like, I kind of admire Pat's play style locally because he just kind of just removes everything from ringside, and he's like, I don't really care. Like, I'll get it back if I need it, and. That kind of stuff, and I was like, man, he's way so aggressive on like removing his ringside from the game. But really, remove from game is just another play area. Yeah, that's accessible, right? It's a little harder to access, but and with with that speed, with with his speed of playing, it gives you as an opponent less time to figure certain things out. Yeah. So with that aggressive play style, if you're not being like, oh, hold on there, yeah, what's going on? You know, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna miss some steps, mm -hmm. which has happened. But I mean, yeah. that's just another way to play the game within yeah, within exactly. the game. It's like bluffing, drawing that card off of the backstage signing appearance, and be like, oh, oh man, this sucks. Yeah. You're trying to pretend that you drew a divine, <laughs> yeah. you really drew a revolution of the mind. <laughs> uh, do you want to do the the topic of the aha moment? Sure. Do you have anything off here? Sure. I do. Yeah, uh, you, I saw that note in there and. My aha moment, I think. Well, let's 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 see what a, the aha moment is. The idea with this is, you know, when you, when we, we are, you're playing raw deal, what was that first kind of like the ha? I have it, like you know, what helped you win your first event, or you got that strategy, or you know, something just really clicked in the game for you, where you kind of from that point going forward, you became a better player. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was. Basically realizing that your ringside pile is a valuable resource. Um, I've touched on it just earlier in this episode in the past, but cards like um, back body drop where you can pick up setups for free. Um, you can remove camp cheats. How about you head upstairs? You remove camp cheats to pick up cheater cards for free. Right? Um, steel chain shots, can't be reading this right, shoot headlocks, cards that have effects that you can pick them up. Um, and just using ringside as an extra resource is just phenomenal. Steel Cage came along and said, Yeah, it kicks the whole idea down. Um, but it, there are still cards that can do stuff with ring, right? Even though that's there, there's still ready right, to fights where you can ace it to pick up and move and things like that, which is 
Something yeah. I realized as a player that uh, when I shuffle for ready to fights, I almost always okay. shuffle in a move, and then I was like, oh, I could have just aced it. I still, I still move. do that. Yeah, okay. I was so awful at that. Um, but yeah, I was like kind of just play testing last okay. night. I was like, ah, oh, I did it again, like shuffling three moves, and I was like, Daddy, now I want to yeah. ace it to pick up a move, Daddy, but I can't. Yes. Yuck. That's an awesome blaster. But yeah, my uh, hall resource. Was awesome my yes. Blaster. Ringside is a resource. For me, I think it came with the backlash deck Mid being very your, deliberate your with your pre match. Your you know, blaster. how can you use that to manipulate things? Yeah. Uh, and then but be more observant of what the opponent's doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, better rivals. It came later than when we started, but that became. I didn't do it very often, but it's a very good tool. I'm actually playing around with that idea. Mm -hmm. With that, for just certain effects that I don't want to reveal right now. Yeah. But it's like, okay, when do I want to play this? Because it stops your opponent from playing balance. Yeah, that's really good. Or, but the big thing is swapping it so you play your pre match cards first. Yeah. So, like, getting on the edge by William Regal yeah. first tracks. back when it was, like, oh. a must-pack card. You're packing it if you were a four superstar boss. Yeah, but that's a little... Because you can't play managed by Regal unless you're lower, right? That's right, but if you're lower, you're playing bitter rivals first to play all your pre-match first. But you still can't play Regal. You were lower, though. But, but, I mean, if your opponent's... Oh, I'm looking at, like, managed by Vince, right? Like, if you're lower and you want to play first, then you can yeah. steal out managed by Vince, right? But say say I'm a four value, my opponent's a six value. Yeah. You know, I guess you can't play it. Right? You know what? what managed by Vince is a perfect example, Managed by right? Vince. Like, you can steal that manager. Yeah. Is, is just be more deliberate with that early steps of the game. Yeah. Um... And then even just arsenal construction, like you've said before, like your your cards, every card has a purpose. Yeah. Most cards or have two, two purposes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it became more, more for that reason. There, it's, we we joked about how no one's played "Don't Be a, a D Bag" as an action, and then after that, it was played twice. Yeah. The same event as an action. Yeah. So that was that was for me. I mean, my first event I won with hard being this original Goldberg. Okay. That's then, interesting. My first one was Heart being original Undertaker. And now we're like, oh, the Heart being original sucks. And you got called out on that. And now it's the card of the show. You know what? I don't want, yeah, I'll, I'll address that, that call out in a bit. Um, I forget where I was going with that. But yeah, so with your aha or your big breakout moment uh, on the YouTube or. I'm going to have a comment sticky for everyone to reply to. Okay. Or even just on the podcast post wherever you see it. Just toss in your idea there. Yeah. I like to hear from the community. Speaking of, a not very good card, it's hard being this original. Uh, we're going to do our, our cards for the show. <laughs> we'll be back for the cards of the show. Uh, speaking of, hard being original, not being very good. <laughs> At least in virtual, I find. Um, we're going to do our cards of the show. Where you compare two cards with similar effects and kind of make them clash and give our, op our opinions on yeah. it. Uh, so this week, we're going to visit... It's hard being this original and you will witness history. Both are classic cards, both are pretty much cards, and both let you search for cards. Yeah. But in turn, they restrict what you can play. Mm -hmm. Um... So I'll just read them off. It's hard being this original. Can't be packed by Rikishi, Right to Censor, Brothers of Destruction, or Dude Love. It's an active Smackdown permanent pre-match card. At the end of the pre-match phase, you search your arsenal from two different non-unique cards, put them into your hand, and shuffle your arsenal. You cannot play any cards with the same title as a card in your ring. And you will witness history. So an active permanent pre-match event. The end of the pre-match phase, search your arsenal for two different non-unique cards that are chain, heat, or volley maneuvers. Reveal them to your opponent, put them into your hand, and shuffle your arsenal. You can only play you can only play maneuvers that are superstar specific, chain, heat, or volley maneuvers. You cannot play a maneuver with the same title as a maneuver in your ring area. So Scott, back in classic, hard being this original. Was almost a must pack card in a lot of. There were yeah, there were certain decks that could really abuse it. Obviously, the four that are listed that can't pack it could really abuse it. But people like Rene Dupree, where you can only pack one of any mm -hmm. card, anyways. Goldberg, build up the hand. Really, anyone that um, went with that 
build your hand up with Premier Smackdown and some Smackdown pre-match yeah. cards um, could work around it. Like even a Brock Lesnar when you have like an 18 card hand size, yeah, sure you only get one, maybe like one Rebo, one Elbow, but with that big of a hand size you have access to so many more resources mm -hmm. right off the bat um, that you didn't really care. Again, guys like Rock, Brock, like where they can run clumsies because their maneuvers are reduced mm -hmm. to three or one damage. Like. I find with, really with Goldberg and Undertaker, where they are both our first tournament wins, what they have in common is um, they can pick up resources from yeah. other spots. Goldberg's searching for maneuvers, but he can also discard three to reverse mm -hmm. a maneuver. So he's not restricted to uh, playability and ring area. Yeah. Where the Undertaker, say you play that step aside, well, okay, now I can pick up a different strike reversal. Exactly, so yeah. you, you have that constant access mm -hmm. to things. Yeah. Plus, Undertaker has his own searching pre-match cards yeah. as well. Yeah. A uh, big drawback is you're limiting any card being played yeah. in ring. Uh, so superstars that can manipulate their ring area, like a million-dollar man, a leader of the leader population, of the and yeah. a virtual, apparently Skip Sheffield's really good, <laughs> yeah. I've been told. Priceless or Legacy uh, can kind of do the same yeah. thing. Um, um, my favorite card to play with her being original is Blindside Tornado Strike, where when played from ringside you remove all reversals in your ring area from the game, so that can reset your entire reversal base mm -hmm. for the whole game. Um, obviously it sucks if you have a card like Sustained Damage that you want to stay in ring area, but you can remove shoot counters, revos, managers, and then replay all of them again, which is pretty awesome. And most reversals don't have like huge damage, so you're not relying on that fortitude for the mm -hmm. game. So even if you lose it, it's like, yeah, I'll get it back. <laughs> Blindside Tornado strikes almost in every deck of mine. Yeah. Just to clear up mid-match. That too, right? That's huge to, especially um, later games, some of your reversals may not be applicable anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, what do you think of You Will Witness History? I do not like that card. Um, I think it's really restricting, especially on that you can't play a card already in your ring area. So guys like Austin that have three patent kicks, Kane and Booker T that can pack five or six mm -hmm. of their non-uniques, obviously like they will never want to run because they can only play one of those cards. Um, I don't like that you can only play Chain Heater Volley, so you get stuck against the old school wrestling match. You couldn't even throw a Sidewalk Slam offensively, because it's not Chain Heater Volley. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a big drawback. I've never really looked at the card in Virtual with Volley. So I've always ran it kind of in a Chain deck in Classic, the odd time in a Heat deck in Classic. Um, and I think one of the first virtual decks I built was Muhammad Hassan, and I ran it at him to give it a, a whirl. But I never really tried it with Volley, so I'm interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in how that may work out. But again, like restricting only one kind, like you only get one cold cocked or one punch after punch, like it's so restricting. <laughs> I, I, and with this card as well, um, there's that the feud all together now. Mm -hmm. Where this, I've played it, that with it, yeah. where you're only playing Chain Heat Volley pre match and mid match cards. Mm -hmm. So this is one of them, but they're all playing for free, so yeah. you can manipulate a little more. Uh, this card also doesn't limit your reversals you're playing. Yeah. So you can play Spine Busters, Power Slams mm -hmm. defensively, yeah. building up that fortitude and doing that damage. As well, they're in virtual, there's some superstars that make. Maneuvers certain types when you're packing them. That's true. I so like Blue Blazer, um, the Heart Foundation, I think. I can't remember who else. I know Roman Reigns like makes... Natalia makes cards chain, I think. Yeah. But or British Bulldog makes cards chain or something like that. But like abilities like that where yeah. like if you're packing this, you know, if you're packing Bash, it's illegal. Yeah. Well, okay, now that I'm packing this, I have a new set of maneuvers mm -hmm. available to mm -hmm. me. That's pretty specific when you're yeah, wanting yeah. to do that. Uh, like Hard Foundation makes your, I think, maneuvers without reverse and your tag team maneuvers uh, chain. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, now I can search for all these. They reduce costs on their maneuvers, so you're opening up a whole new can of worms. Yeah. The one thing that I did like about Hard being original, I recently did pack it in a Nikki Bella deck that I had, the throwback Fearless Nikki. Um, 
And it, what it did was it made me look at other cards, especially virtual cards, that I hadn't looked at or thought of packing because you can only run one. So I kind of leaned more towards unique, but I looked at cards like Two Time, Two Time, which hasn't really been played in our area, but apparently is really, really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I'm like, oh, hey, cool. It's like a card that I can pack, and there were a few other... Um, I think actions that I looked at, but I was like that I never really would have looked at outside of a hard being original deck because I would just pack three of another card, mm -hmm. right, and never look at that. So that was kind of neat. It gave me reason to look at some of the other virtual cards that I <laughs> hadn't looked at. I like that you win this history um, with the flaws transition. I know, like, I haven't looked at that card since that's come out. Mm -hmm. But again, you can't play panics with your witness history. Or Desperate Struggles. Mm -hmm. So that was a big drawback for me, was you couldn't play Panics with it. But now you get the Flawless Transition, I'm like, hey, might be worth looking at again. Mm -hmm. right? And you're manipulating what zero fourths you move, but we, we talked about another comparable card of this tech in a bottle, mm -hmm. where that Flawless Transition guaranteed you're searching for that zero fourths you yeah, move you, you want to put with it. Quick snapper wrap around to mm -hmm. play with it right away. But I mean, Witness History also goes with superstars that can manipulate their ring area. Yeah. Right, so. It's cool. And I mean, there are cards where you can remove your own cards from your ring. Yeah, backstage politics. Mm -hmm. um, there's break, break it out, break it down. There's the heat one. venue. Yeah. Uh, that when it's in your, it's in 0 for 2, when it's in your ring area, your opponent can activate it to put it in his ring area by removing a card from ring. Yeah. So, I've got to look at that card again. Yeah. And there's the, there are the superstars that can flip cards over. Yeah. So they could flip this card, over, flip over that maneuver, and then they could play. Yeah. Something not listed on it. <laughs> and then later on, they could uh, flip the other card. Oh, that's a really good yeah, idea. They could flip it back over, yeah. It's a lot I of hope, I hope that's a, I hope that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good card. Yeah, yeah. I like them. I, I haven't played either since uh, Virtual. I mean, we, I, we, yeah. we talked about hard being, and then you were like, why bother? There's so many cards that let you search for cards. Why yeah. would you want to limit yourself? Exactly, to that? right? Like tech in a bottle. If you just want a zero four to maneuver, tech in a bottle I think does it way better. Um, yeah, there's just so many cards that you mm -hmm. can search for some managed by Regal if you're lower. But, but like you said with your Roman Dean, there's so many cards that <laughs> get rid of those exactly, cards. Exactly, right? For. So you like there's not a lot you can do to protect yourself and mm -hmm. I know that was a chat just in our local group is like what cards can work like a luck is for losers or Funaki that I can search for this key card and put it under and there's just not that mm -hmm. many that can do it and maybe that can be a topic for our next show mm -hmm. for people who are looking for <laughs> alright this card is key to my strategy what can I do and I think Raw Deal's done a really good job around not allowing that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Where like, okay, if I build this deck and I get this one key card, I just automatically win. Like, that's not really fun. So <laughs> the designers have been like, okay, how can we ensure that doesn't happen every single mm -hmm. game and not let it get abused, right? So. And that's why I hope that they continue making more non-superstar specific cards in virtual because I think that really changes up the meta and some design ideas where you look at it, like, even if they release six new cards, mm -hmm. and you look at like Flawless Transition, Desperate Struggle, Luck yeah. is for Losers, like those particular non-specifics they release can really change things for the positive, yeah. but also for the negative, more so if you're the opponent of that yeah. card being played. And the great thing is like, that you can do revisions, right? So if they release something and they're like, oh crap, Jamie Noble does abuse us, well, we can see. Mm. Like, it cannot be backed by him or changing it ever so slightly. I know you don't want to do that, but that's just nature of the beast. Yeah. <laughs> when you have 300 superstars or whatever there are in the game, like, you're going to miss one or two. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen, right? Oh, yeah, I was unlucky, and there's over 5,000 virtual classic, like classic and virtual non revolution yeah. cards in the game. Wow. You're bound to find. A broken combination, combination. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why I like the revisions is with the virtual they could just as easily be like well okay this yeah. does something different now mm -hmm. like uh, the old school brawl the 0 for 2 min yeah. reversal used to be something different the first came out it was awful yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was it hit the third card I think yeah I don't even remember because all I see is purple text yeah and now it hits the second word. so yeah uh, I don't have anything else 
for this, Scott. Do uh, you have anything? The one thing that I wanted to touch on was give a shout out to Keith in Singapore. He's been doing those virtual revolution superstar reviews. Where, which is awesome for me because I'm really trying to get into revolution, <laughs> but I have no idea what's going on. Um, so he like posts superstar reviews and was like, "All right, I'll reference the King Booker one because that's who I have printed out." Um, and he did a review for it, and he's like, "All right, here's a superstar ability. Here's like ten cards that you've got to pack because they're awesome with his ability." I'm like, "Here's his pre-match, and how here are some cards that you want to pack with that, and here's his mid-match, and here's some thoughts on that." So it's really awesome because I have no idea like where to start with Revolution, mm. and now he's like, "All right, here's kind of a starting point." go from there mm. and see, and I was like, awesome. Now, my big issue is that I don't have any of the 10 cards that he listed, because mm. I don't have any Revolution 3, so I'm talking with my local player to say, all right, hook me up, or Funkcon, bring your Revo 3, and I'll um, get it off you guys. But I'm excited about that, just, again, because it's a quicker, faster-paced game, with kids running in and out of the video, I can play a game in 20 mm -hmm. minutes, <laughs> rather than an hour-long game. And I, f I read recently that there's a group out in Montreal, I believe it is, and all they play is Revolution. Oh, yeah. So, shout out to them, bonjour, yeah. if they're listening. <laughs> uh, but where can you find these virtual superstar reviews online? Because they're not on Team Canada online. I think they're on the Singapore Facebook group. That were on the OST? Yeah. And he posts about one a week, one every two weeks. Um, and that's a great Revolution Primer. Like, here's Superstar Strategy Guards, and he does it. Where, you know, like TCO, it's like, all right, here's some questions, and here's the card text. And then you essentially got to rely on other people to give input. Where mm -hmm. he's like, I'm going to take this bull by the horns, and like, I'm going to post it, and I'm going to give my input mm. right to start. So there is something to, like, kind of talk about, or build on, or use as a resource. So I like that a lot. Thanks. <laughs> and on that, let's say our farewell. Do you know how they say goodbye in Singapore? No. Goodbye. <laughs>